Good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Carolyn McGee. I am here for Sunday Morning Grace. And um, unfortunately, Reverend Dawn Simpson is unable to join me today. Um, her grandson was in the hospital and she needs to be with him and to be holding space with him and for him. So um, appreciate you all, you healers and you wonderful um, living with the angels people. If you could hold space for Dawn and her grandson, thank you so much. So today, um, as always, we are going to, and <clears throat> excuse me too, I'm a little bit under the weather, but we're going to get through this. This is the time of the year that we really anchor into possibilities. Our topic is the light of hope, and uh, I will get into that more in just a couple minutes. But as always, I would love to gather our circle. So uh, please put your hands out. Imagine the energetic circle that we are creating, the person to your right, the person to your left. Feel their energy, because whether people are watching live or joining in on the replay later on at any point in time, we are an energy circle. So just close your eyes if it's safe for you. Take in three deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth. And three. And just feel the tingling in your palms, that energy from the soul who is next to you. Feel the connection, that heat. Perhaps you feel a little squeeze of encouragement, of support, just a little bit of love flowing your way. And perhaps you send a little bit of love back. This time that we're in here in the United States, we're approaching Thanksgiving, time of gratitude. And all in the Northern Hemisphere, it is starting to get darker. Approaching that time of stillness, a time of retreat. About a month ago, I looked on my ring camera in my front yard and there was a bear. This beautiful black bear just wandering through my yard on its way somewhere looking for food, disappointed in my yard. I'm sure. And I was reminded that the spiritual aspect of bear is specifically back bear is retreat to pull within. To stop the energy that we have, you know, through the spring and through the summer months. And to trust. You know, as a bear hibernates, it trusts, it finds a place that feels safe and retreats within, trusting that it has everything it needs. The food that it has consumed over the spring and the summer will nourish it and keep it alive during this time of rest. The, the cave or place where the bear is hibernating will not be discovered that it will be safe during its slumber. And for you, I invite you to bring into your imagination the flicker of a, a small candle, or maybe it's a big candle, but let's stick with a candle. Very simple. I like to have electronic candles in my windows, I leave them there all year long. They are a beacon of hope for me. It's a beacon of your welcome to come to my home. 
So I want you to bring into your imagination, into your awareness, that flicker of light that lives within you, that flicker of light that's your soul. That flicker of light that is always optimistic because it knows the truth that everything that is happening is happening for you, not to you, for you. So just bring into your awareness and hold it firm. I like to bring in my candle into the area in front of my chest. and just see it flickering there. And keeping your eyes closed. Notice that flicker of light starts to expand. It expands into a pillar of light that goes from your heart, past your throat, past your third eye and out of the crown of your head. And it goes into your own personal star. Just feel that light burning, that light of hope, that light that connects you to your soul and your soul's purpose and your soul's craving to learn and expand. Allow that to create that pillar of a light that goes through your upper chakras and into your own personal star. That star is your star of inspiration. It's the connection to Father Sky. And it's a connection to the divine masculine. That divinity of producing, creating, implementing our creative energies and impulses. Just really breathe that in and feel it for a few moments. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee as we do that, just allowing that connection. The beautiful energy, unconditional love. And now bring your awareness back to your heart in that flickering candle, that flickering flame that's connecting to your soul. That light, that light of hope, that light of awareness, that light of it's all good. Bring that into your awareness again and allow it to start to move down through your body. Move past your heart, past your solar plexus, past your sacral and out of your root, down through all the layers of the earth and down into the center of the earth, the heartbeat, where we are all one. fully connected, fully aware, fully present. This beautiful divine light from your sacred heart is connecting into the mother the mother of us all, because we truly are all one. We are truly all connected. We are truly all present to this moment, to feel that warmth, to feel the warmth of that divine feminine, that nurturing energy, that centering energy, that grounded energy, the energy of creativity. And so just feel that and notice how that flicker in your heart becomes stronger as it's connected to the divine feminine and the divine masculine. That there is this energy that flows into it. And as you notice that, notice also that that flicker, your soul feeds the divine feminine and the divine masculine, that source of inspiration and the source of creativity. 
that there is this movement of energy that is going in both directions, filling your soul, reminding you that you are a divine being having a physical experience, bringing clarity, shining the light, shining the light on possibilities. You know, that single flame in your heart overcomes any shadows, overcomes any negativity, any fears, any anxieties, truly overcomes the darkness. And I invite you to just really tap in to that awareness, that energy that you have in your heart and utilize it. You can leave you can safely leave that flame running 24-7 all the time. Allow it to be your focal point as we go into this longer times of the year. And for those of you who are in the Southern Hemisphere, you've got plenty of light, but you want to use your own personal light also. Allow that to energize your life bring a little clarity to things because no matter what, the darkness is there for us. The darkness is there to help us, to support us, to um, bring clarity, bring connection. Just as our ancestors millennia ago gather around the fire, the fire brought them safety and security from whatever was out in the woods around them or outside their stockade fences or wherever they lived outside of their little villages. The fire brought light. The fire brought clarity. The fire burned away what no longer served. And it was a gathering point. And now here you are, we are, with this fire in our hearts that can bring that same clarity to you, to you and your mission, to you and what your next right steps are. And help you understand that this retreat energy that, that I'm in right now, and that many of us are in, is for our highest good. We go within, we slow down, we get clarity. We nurture ourselves over the, the winter time. So that in the spring, we can come out with new understanding and new awareness. Or perhaps it's in the new year that we come with a new product, a new mission, a new gift to bring out into the world. But without pulling back, without lighting that candle, lighting that flame in our own sacred hearts, it's hard for us to see. It's hard for us to really become aware of all of the possibilities that are in our energy that are just waiting for us to match our frequency to them. This time is a great time of manifesting. You know, that light that we bring, the hope that we acknowledge, that can turn real as we pull back. I need to take a sip of something. Hold on, please. So if you just think about a moment, what it takes to manifest, because manifesting is that hope turned 3D, brought into our awareness. And to manifest, we have to match our vibration with the vibration of what it is that we're bringing in, that we're intending to create. Everything around us was started as a thought started as a concept and someone brought it into reality. 
someone thought about the way they wanted the angel behind me to look. It was created and brought into form. And that's what we do when we hope, when we pray, when we manifest, when we intend. They're all versions of the same type of energy that we can bring in. But as I mentioned, we need to match the frequency. We need to keep our energy aligned. And the easiest way, although it's not an easy way <laughs> for this to happen, is to allow the time for us to clear our own energy, release what's blocking us from receiving what we want to receive. And this darkness that we're heading into, this hibernation, so to speak, is a beautiful way to allow that to happen. We don't push. We allow. You know, one of the, the greatest gifts that um, I've received through my time with Angels Teach and through um, the studies becoming um, a minister was the recognition that praying is asking and meditating is receiving. And, you know, meditating is... It's kind of like the hibernation. We, we sit still. We go within. We allow. We don't do. We don't make things happen. We allow our bodies to re-energize. We allow our energy to connect into source so that we can receive that inspiration. It's just like that divine heart that you've got going right now. That flame. You're igniting possibilities. You're igniting your soul. You're igniting your connection to all that is. The divine masculine and the divine feminine. Father sky, mother earth. Inspiration and creativity. I'm reminded of you know, the story of the monk who sits on um, the top of a mountain and meditates but then never comes out of that state, and I'm paraphrasing this, to actually put into creation all of the beautiful concepts. Now, that was his job. That was his role to receive. But most of us as humans, we have a dual role. We have the role of receiving the guidance, receiving the inspiration, bringing it into our physical bodies, grounding it down in our first three chakras, and then taking the action to bring that concept out into the world. And as we do that, as we allow the energy to move through us, in us, and then up through our hearts out into the world, using that magical flame, that's how we bring into our reality the things that we most want. Whether it's more abundance of any type, a new home, a partner, a partner in business, a partner in your life, a child, better health, whatever it is that you are looking to create more of, look within your heart during your meditation to see what you might need to release. And releasing isn't just physical things. Releasing is energies. What perhaps are you holding on to that's in your way of receiving what your heart's desire? Really just think about that for a moment. Are you holding on to a concept? Are you holding on to maybe a piece of furniture? that doesn't bring you joy? Are you holding on to a job that perhaps brings you financial prosperity, but a lot of anxiety? Letting go and knowing, you know, hoping is putting the energy out there that everything is gonna be good, it's all good. 
But there's also the energy of creation that we need and the energy of source bringing in how to do that the most easy way. But if we connect that all together and really believe in that, you know, that let that light that's in your chest, that's in your heart chakra, show you the way, clear away what is holding you back, those dark shadows. You know, for me, I had been talking about moving to North Carolina for almost 20 years. And I wasn't ready to go for so many reasons. I mean, the biggest one is that my children lived in Massachusetts and they needed a home and I needed to be the home. <laughs> you know, both their dad and I lived there and it was their place to come back to after college and or during college. And it just didn't make sense. But I kept putting out the vibration of I'm going to North Carolina. I know North Carolina is my home. It's where I belong. And I didn't have any expectations on how it was going to happen. I understood very deeply in my heart that the timing wouldn't be right until my youngest graduated from college. So I could put into play, I could visualize, I could imagine, um, I could research because that's all part of it too is you having that energy and that awareness of something that I was hoping for that was really important to me. And it, but I wasn't living in the future. And that's a really important part for what you hope for. If you put all of your hopes and dreams into the future and you're not living in the moment, you're not creating the energy to be able to manifest that hope and that dream what you're seeing in that light, that light that's in your, in your beautiful hearts. So. Living in the moment is keeping that candle burning, is keeping that light shining, that awareness that you have something you're searching for, but you're still fully engaged in life. For, for my story, which is what I'm being guided to walk you through for this, I loved my life in Massachusetts. I made such beautiful friends, becoming a minister, being deeply involved with Angels Teach and the other people nourished me. Starting my pet business and making a difference and helping people you know, go on vacation or go to work, um, it, it nourished me. It fed me both energetically and physically. It allowed my children to have wonderful childhoods. I, I created a beautiful home. I had beautiful gardens. I had wonderful friends. I truly lived my life while knowing that the future was bringing something different and that I was creating my life now to be a vibrational match for what was coming. But I wasn't just living in the future, only dreaming of what's coming. I was creating from a point of peace. One of the biggest things that I have seen in my own life, and I'll be curious to see what other people's experiences are, is it's difficult to manifest from a place of lack. Now, I'm not talking about not having money. I'm talking about a lack feeling like you're not good enough or you don't have enough or um, you're not worthy. So taking the time now when you, just like I did for those 20 years where I knew that my soul yearned to be someplace else, I still created, I did the work on me. I expanded my energy, I learned, and I grew, and I envisioned possibilities. And then I was ready. That day in July of 2020, when I woke up to my angel voice saying, you're moving to North Carolina and you're going to be there by Thanksgiving, I was ready. I had prepared, and I was excited. And I was at a space where I could just say, okay, please make it easy. And it was. 
So I invite you to just take a moment now, to close your eyes with me and bring into your awareness one thing that you want. Whatever it is, just be crystal clear on it. Really see it, really hold it. See it be infused with that candle, that flame, that light that is in your heart. And then ask it what its time frame is. I never would have thought mine was 20 years, <laughs> but it was a beautiful 20 years. Maybe yours is a year. Maybe yours is a month. Maybe yours is the next hour. Just ask, what is the time frame for you for this desire, this hope, this intention that you hold in your, in your heart? And then bring your awareness to your physical body and your mental body and your moral body, your spiritual body. And just see, using your beautiful light that's in your heart, is there anything that's holding you back from that dream, from that hope, from that thing that you want to manifest to bring into reality? And if there is, just make a mental note of it. Do some energy clearing. Tapping EFT is a fabulous way to release energy from your body. If it's a family pattern, the ancestral clearings, karma clearings are a fabulous way to release that too. Just ask your angels for support. See who comes into your awareness to help you to release whatever it is you're stuck. It may be a physical thing that you're holding on to out of obligation. You know, feng shui your life, feng shui your energy, feng shui your own. Release what no longer serves you and allow somebody else to, to have it and to allow it to bring them joy. It will raise your energy so that you then match the vibration of what you're trying to do to, to create. Perhaps it's an old attitude that you're holding on to or a resentment or some anger. Perhaps it's anxiety. Some type of an addiction, food, TV, <laughs> anything else. We all have little patterns that hold us back. Maybe little speed bumps along the way. So just notice that. And as you come back more into your awareness, back into this time and this space, make a note and ask your angels, ask your guides to help you release what it is that's stopping you from manifesting your dreams, that's stopping you from creating your heart's desire. And now I invite you to just take three deep breaths again in through your nose and out through your mouth. And perhaps you want to diminish that sacred flame just a little bit. Leave it burning. But bring your awareness or bring it smaller in your awareness. In one, two, and three. And just th thank that light, that flame, that light of possibilities that burns in your heart, your soul who's always searching, searching to make your life easier, searching to bring you joy, searching for an easy way for you to shed the energy that no longer serves you. So your homework <laughs> is to type in the comments one thing you're willing to release to fully step into your joy, your hope, 
your possibilities, your clarity, your connection. Spend a little time with your heart, with that sacred flame, with that light to understand what you can release. And maybe it's an expectation, an expectation of how things should be. There's power in releasing that. And I'll type mine too. I'll put mine in the comments when I'm finished here. So I'm just going to check quickly to see if there's any comments now. I am not seeing any, so I'm just going to end as we always do. With our beautiful tenants. The 13 tenants of the divine order of the sacred rose. I open my heart with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's purpose through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all good. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my truth. I listen to the spiritual messages within my physical body. I express myself creatively. I love all beings with an open heart and an open mind. I am one with Mother Earth. And so it is. Thank you all for joining Sunday Morning Grace. This is Reverend Carolyn McGee. Bye-bye for now.